ക്ലീനേഴ്സ് പൗളി ആരക്ഷാവ് സാധിക്കായി night the tip of the iceberg the marine environment protection authority files its first compensation claim for express pearl damages the whole 9 yards 1 million more sinopharm vaccines arrive in sri lanka as the public are warned not to expect full protection from just a single dose coming colors The police are to begin a color code sticker system tomorrow in order to better monitor essential service commuters. All this and much more coming up on this Sunday, the 6th of June 2021. Pocket ticket to fit win a new X ticket perfume. From Ada Derana. This is Ada Derana first at 9. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at 9. I am Shanella Fernando in your top stories for tonight. The death toll from the inclement weather and resulting flood conditions rose to 16 today along with 5 injured and 3 others reported missing. The number of people affected by the adverse weather increased by over 100,000 during the past 24 hours with the latest situation report of the disaster management center placing the number at over 200,000. In addition to floods and landslides, power outages too were experienced across the island affecting around 100 thousand consumers Floods brought on by incessant rains have been plaguing the lives of people across 10 districts for the past week. The adverse weather conditions have claimed the lives of 16 people so far and left 5 injured. The heavy rains have caused the swelling of the Kalu Kalani Ging and Nilwala rivers as well as the Attanagalu Oya resulting in heavy floods to surrounding areas. However, the Karubela and Vellampiti areas seem to be facing the worst of it due to the rising water levels of the Kalani River. Water levels of up to 3 feet were witnessed in the Karubela area disrupting traffic along the Hangwalla Kalambo low level road from Karubela. With the overflowing of the Kalani River, many areas in the Gampa district too have also been flooded out. Meanwhile residents of Mirigama staged a protest today alleging that irregular construction of the Central Expressway is the main cause of flooding in low lying areas. In addition the overflowing Kalu River has inundated many low lying areas in the Kalutara district disrupting vehicular movement along the Matugama Horana road. Further in the midst of floods landslides too continue to be reported across the country with 10 districts already on high alert in the Kalutara district the divisional secretariats of Agalavatta Matugama Palindanura Ingiria and Bulat Singhala are on a red alert red alerts have also been issued for the divisional secretariats of Yatiantota Dehiovita Bulat Kohupitiya Daraniyagala Kegol Varakapola Galigamoa Ruanvella Aranayaka, Mavanalla and Rambukkana in the Kegol district. The disaster management center meanwhile continues to urge people in high risk areas to evacuate immediately. People who are living in the areas which are identified by the NBRO as red areas, they need to move from these locations as mentioned earlier. If any relief matters, they can call via 117 call center. Meanwhile, damages have been reported across 10 districts so far, affecting 270,912 people from 67,564 families. Right now, over 15,000 displaced are being sheltered at 72 emergency centers. 
house damages will be assessed and they will be given the compensations uh, as soon as possible so all the funds being released to the district secretaries by the disaster management center and the relief officers are still standby and they are working 24 7 basis at the ground level and disaster management units completely are working with the military and the police uh, at the ground level as well and the emergency operation center is coordinating all the technical agencies and getting the data and uh, providing the early warning and the emergency rescue uh, missions as well in the meantime power outages are also a concern in several parts of the island the ministry of power and energy reveals that around 100000 electricity consumers have been affected by power outages Meanwhile, following the overflowing of the underground furnace oil tanks at the Sapugaskanda refinery, 24-hour operations by the Navy and Coast Guard continue to remove furnace oil from the floodwaters before it reaches the Kalani River. Despite this, residents of Balahena in Heyanthuruva say their existing problems have only gotten worse by the furnace oil problem with wells contaminated and some people falling ill. Meanwhile, Mahawaya in Ampara received the highest rainfall with 108.2 mm being recorded over the past 24 hours, showing some reduction in rainfall compared to the past two days. In its weather forecast for the next 36 hours, the Department of Meteorology says that showers will continue in western Sabaragamu and northwestern provinces and in Gaul, Mathara, Norelia and Kandy districts. The Marine Environmental Protection Authority has made its first claim for compensation against the MV Express Pearl. Meanwhile, in distressing scenes along the coastline, a number of sea creatures, including multiple turtles and a dolphin, were seen washed up dead on the shores. The Singapore-flagged MV Express Pearl started sinking last Wednesday, a day after authorities extinguished a fire that raged on the vessel for about 10 days. Efforts to tow the ship into deeper waters away from the port of Colombo failed after the ship's stern submerged and rested on the 22-meter seabed. Following this marine disaster, the Marine Environment Protection Authority delegated its powers to the Criminal Investigation Department to investigate and determine whether any acts of negligence, omission or wrongdoing has been committed by the vessel's crew. According to the police media spokesperson, the CID has so far recorded statements from about 20 individuals regarding the MV Express Pearl fire and are currently analysing the voyage data recorder recovered from the stricken vessel. The day before yesterday, a special team consisting of the members of Criminal Investigation Department, the Government Analysis Department and the Merchant Shipping Institutions visited the ship and they have recorded various uh, statements and collected circumstantial evidence in respect of the incident. In addition to that, samples have been taken by the officials of uh, Government Analysis Department in respect of uh, environmental pollution. Yesterday, Criminal Investigation Department has received the voyage data recorder of the ship. This is the device which contains all the communication dialogues between the captain and the mother company and the local agent. So these communications are essential to conduct further investigations. Meanwhile, the Marine Environmental Protection Authority, as the authority looking into the matter, has filed their first claim for compensation through the Attorney General's Department. According to Marine Pollution Prevention Act, we have provisions to take civil actions to get the compensation paid to us to the damages done to Sri Lanka, to the economy, to the environment and also to other direct and indirect losses. For this, we have appointed an eminent panel of experts who helped us in the previous incident of MT New Diamond and we have nearly 28 professionals there and two eminent professors from two universities are co-chair in this committee and this committee comprises of multidisciplinary professors and also various institutions such as wildlife, fisheries, NARA, NBRO, etc. So we are well in the track. I can assure that we will take the maximum possible actions against this incident and also will take maximum effort to get the maximum possible compensation to the country. Meanwhile, in more heart-wrenching scenes along the coastline, a number of dead turtles, a dolphin, seabirds and fish were seen washed up ashore today, all victims of the MV Express Pearl fire. <laughs> Thank you.
in a message of greetings to the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation, President Gotabi Rajapaksa expressed Sri Lanka's continued commitment to all of the organization's initiative, initiatives. Rather, with BIMSTEC celebrating its 24th anniversary this year, the head of state announced that the Sri Lankan government, as this year's chair, hopes to hold the fifth BIMSTEC summit in Colombo later this year, but only if the pandemic situation improves. The Seven Nation Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation celebrates its 24th anniversary this year with many leaders extending their wishes to the organization today on what has been termed as BIMSTEC Day. An international organization of South Asia and Southeast Asia, the BIMSTEC region is home to 1.73 billion people contributing to a combined gross domestic product of 3.8 trillion US dollars. The seven members, including Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Thailand. Sri Lanka is the current chair of the organization and has expressed hopes of hosting the fifth BIMSTEC summit later this year in Colombo. Offering his greetings on BIMSTEC Day today, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa expressed Sri Lanka's commitment to all BIMSTEC initiatives as it has done so in the past as one of the organization's founder members. The president added that depending on the mitigation of the current wave of COVID-19 infections in the country, they look forward to being able to host the fifth BIMSTEC summit if the situation is brought under control and travel restrictions placed by member states are lifted. The president also urged the members to work towards shared progress and deepen ties to address the challenges faced by the region, which he says can do much better than contributing only 4% of global GDP, despite being home to 22% of the world's population. The arrival of 1 million Sinopharm vaccines this morning has given the country's hopes of vaccinating 65% of its population before the year is out a slight boost. With the delivery of another 1 million doses promised by the Chinese manufacturer next week, the government expects to expand its vaccination program to 12 districts, State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana announced today. The State Minister also urged the public to go out and get their second Sinopharm doses as full protection is only built up after the second dose is administered. Sri Lanka's vaccination program received an early morning boost today as another 1 million Sinopharm vaccines landed at the Bandar Naika International Airport during the early hours of the day. The shipment was flown into the country on board Sri Lankan Airlines flight UL869. With Sinopharm vaccinations in full swing since early May, the country's vaccine stocks seem to be getting a constant replenishment and with the arrival of this latest 1 million doses, things certainly seem to be looking up for the national program. With that, State Minister of Production, Supply and Regulation of Pharmaceuticals, Professor Channa Jayasumana says that with another 1 million doses expected to arrive next week, the national vaccination program will be expanded to a dozen more districts. Sinopharm in the Matra, Lakshadahaya Kadudas and Sri Lanka at Labuna, Raja Aushadini. Sanstava, give him Karlatama in at Pramani Labagate, Eva Game China Sinopam Samagama Patadano Tina, Elevena Satyatula, Tavat, Sinopam in Nat Matra Lakshadhaya, Sri Lanka Labadino Kila. Tapote, Apato Puluan Kamatina, Idri Satyaka Pamana Kaledi, Tavat District Dolahakate, and Nat Kerna Viapare, Viapta Karan. Accordingly, Sri Lanka has now received a total of two point one million Sinopharm doses to date, which includes one point one million doses received as part of Chinese government assistance. Sri Lanka has ordered 14 million doses in total from Sinopharm, by far the largest order to a single producer. Meanwhile, in terms of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine that the government initially based its vaccination program on, Sri Lanka has only received 1.264 million doses so far. This consists of an initial 500,000 dose donation from the Indian government and a further 500,000 doses purchased by the government from the Serium Institute in India. In addition, the World Health Organization too delivered 264,000 doses through its COVAX facility. So far, Sri Lanka has purchased 65,000 Sputnik V vaccines and another 65,000 doses have been ordered as well. This brings the total number of vaccine doses received by Sri Lanka so far to 3,429,000. Meanwhile, to date, a total of 1,943,708 or 9% of Sri Lankans have been administered their first doses, while only 353,156 have received their second so far. With half the year now complete, the government plans to vaccinate 65% of the population by the end of the year. With that, State Minister of Production, Supply and Regulation of Pharmaceuticals, Professor Chandra Sumana, called on everyone who has received their first Sinopharm dose 
not to consider themselves fully protected until they receive their second as well. May Masi Atavini the Oba Palavini in the Labagatana Yamkistani Kedi, Emma Stani Dime, Juni Masi Atavini the Sinopam in the Unimatra, Labagano, but a Pulua. Eva Game Vishesha Makianona, Pfizer Saha, Moderna, Enna. Eva Game Sputnik. AstraZeneca, Saha Johnson and Johnson in Palavini Matra, Labagata, Salaki, Utumatame, Pratishaktia, Godenegin. Hebei, Sinovax, Sino Farm Vage, Akria Kernala de in Tuling, Pratishaktia, Godenegin, Devini Matra, Labagata Passi, Ekanisa, Anivarim, Uba Sino Farm Minete, Palavini Matra, Labagatanang, Emma Devini Matra, Labagata, Utumai, Emanatang, Ubahariate, and Nat Nogala, Ha Samanai. The police announced that a color-coded sticker system will be used to mark essential service personnel from tomorrow as a means to fast-track vehicle checks being carried out at checkpoints at all entry points into Colombo. As such, 11 differently colored stickers will be used to designate the different sectors engaged in essential services and will be valid until the end of the travel restriction period. However, President of the PHI's union, Upul Rohan, has stated that there are many organizations that have been functioning legally as essential services. Police media spokesperson DIG Ajit Rohana announced today that 11 color-coded vehicle stickers will be used to differentiate those engaged in essential services from tomorrow. He added that this move was prompted due to the delays in police verification checks at multiple roadblocks across all entry points into Colombo. Accordingly, the sticker will be valid until the end of the travel restriction period, allowing only the number of persons specified on the sticker to travel. DIG Rohana also warned the public that attempting to alter the passenger information on the sticker would be futile as the stickers have their own security features. Speaking at a media briefing today, DIG Rohana explained the meaning behind the color coding system. द्रव्य बेदा delivery Meanwhile, with heavy vehicular traffic still witnessed on roads and calls for organizations to stick to essential stuff only rules seemingly ignored, organizations are being accused of falsely operating under the guise of essential services. අද දිනේ වෙද්දී ලංකාවේ බොහෝ ප්‍රදේශවල මේ අත්‍යවශ්‍ය කියන ලේබලයට මුවා වෙලා විශාල ආයතන සංඛ්‍යාවක් පවත්වාගෙන යනවා කිසිසේත් අත්‍යවශ්‍ය නොවන ඒ වගේම සියලුම කාර්ය මණ්ඩල කැඳවීම් කරලා තියෙනවා විශේෂයෙන්ම අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වුණා ලබන සතියේ අගභාගයේ වෙද්දී යම් රෝගීන්ගේ අඩුවීමක් නමුත් මේ පවතින තත්ත්ව යටතේ කොවිඩ් 19 පැතිරීම සඳහා ඉවහල් වන සියලුම සාධක නැවත වරක් ඒ ආකාරයෙන් රට තුල පැවතීම නිසා මේ පවතින තත්ත්ව යටතේ නම් අපිට බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්න බෑ ලබන සතියේ අගබාගේ වෙද්දි රෝගීන්ගේ අඩුවීමක් සිද්ධ වෙයි කියලා. ඒ නිසා අපි විශේෂයෙන්ම අවධාරණය කරනවා මේ රටේ බලධාරීන්ට සහ අනෙකුත් පුරවැසියන්ට අපි සංචරණ සීමා පැනෙව්වේ ඇයි කියලා අවධාරණය කරගන්න. In the meantime, Minister of Water Supply Vasudeva Nanayakara stated today that a decision will be taken to provide a one-month grace period to the general public for the settlement of their outstanding water bills. The epidemiology unit reported cases over the 3,000 mark once again for yesterday. Further, the country's death toll rose to 1,696 after 40 more deaths were confirmed yesterday of patients who passed away between the 21st of May and the 4th of June. This brings the country's official death rate to 0.84% so far. Once again, over 3,000 COVID-19 cases were confirmed across all 25 districts of the country yesterday. Apart from nine foreign arrivals who tested positive for COVID-19, 3,094 infections were recorded across all 25 districts of the country. The bulk of the cases were recorded from the Western Province with 1,512 cases. 
The majority of the infections from the Western Province were recorded from the Colombo district with 828 cases, while Gampa recorded 544. The remaining district in the Western Province, Kaluthara, confirmed 140 COVID-19 cases. In contrast, the lowest number of novel coronavirus infections were detected in the North Central Province with just 24. Meanwhile, 255 infections were confirmed in Kurunagalam, 224 in Mataram and 124 in Kandy. A further 17 of the districts accounted for 793 infections from yesterday's daily caseload. As for today, 2,976 new COVID-19 infections have been confirmed so far. In the meantime, the number of COVID-19-related deaths rose by 40 to 1,696 yesterday. According to the Department of Government Information, 20 of the victims were between the age of 70 to 79 years. The department also stated that 9 of the victims had succumbed to the virus at their residences, while 6 died on admission to hospitals. The remaining 25 died while receiving treatment at hospitals. The deaths had reportedly taken place between the 21st of May and the 4th of June. On average in Sri Lanka, 77 COVID-19 related fatalities take place for every 1 million people, while the overall death rate calculated against the total cases is currently at 0.84%. Meanwhile, with the recovery of 1,172 COVID-19 patients today, Sri Lanka's overall recoveries rose to 167,304. As such, the island's overall active cases currently stand at 39,309. A man has been injured in a shooting incident that occurred in Kandigura Ratkama at around 7 p.m. last night. According to police reports, the victim had been riding a motorbike on the road when another motorcyclist had opened fire on him. The victim was afterwards admitted to the Karapitiya Hospital for treatment. He has been identified as a president, resident rather of the Panvila Navajanapada area in Ratkama. It has also been revealed that there are three ongoing murder cases against the victim in the goal court. Welcome back in your business news. Market experts expect investors to be in a positive mindset in the upcoming week, with buying interest expected to rise in the banking, insurance, diversified financials and material segments. However, they warn that investor confidence could be severely affected from shocks that take place on the country's pandemic front. The old share price index gained by 51.18 points to close at 7,567.38, while the S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks closed at 3046.47 points last Friday. Here's Dimantha Matthew with what to expect at the Colombo Stock Exchange during the week ahead. Looking at the upcoming week, we feel that most of the investors are likely to be on a positive mood due to the strong profits that has been released by most of the companies. So we feel that buying interest is likely to be there in the banking and insurance segments and also diversified financials and materials segments. So these are companies that are likely to have very strong earnings in the upcoming months and we with this, we feel that most investors are likely to gradually accumulate these counters. Turnover levels and retail activity is likely to be high. That is mainly because of the strong buying interest and confidence levels that is emerging in the market. But on a note of caution, we would like to indicate that any escalation in the COVID situation, any shocks relating to the COVID situation could be of a detrimental effect to the confidence levels of the investors. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining. I'm Shanela Fernando. Have a good night.